I'm listening to your latest talk. I don't need to know myself, really. You know who I am, or you know of me. I know of you. This message specifically. Ah, oh, darling. No, the latest talk is... What is it? Dakini by the watch. 49. <laughs> and, uh, it's brought up... It, the subject... Was initially brought up several days ago. What was it? Two days ago. What is it? The 22nd? I guess Solstice was yesterday. Ah, yes. Summer Solstice of 2022. Just for reference, in case you pull this thing up in the future. This little message here, I just wanted to... I just wanted to, no. I'm urged. It's like an urgent message. Yes, I love that word. Urge. I feel the urge to speak. And be heard. No. No, not merely heard. But listened to. Listen is an anagram of silence. For they are concurrent. A, a true listener can be nothing but silent. Then, unfortunately, no one listens to you. Anyway, the topic of the recovery movement. Someone brought it up. What are you doing now? What are you doing? Are you recording? Yeah. What are you doing? One. No, I'm not talking. Yeah, I'm talking. What does it look like I'm doing? Things like what? <laughs> me! Get out of here. Let me poop in peace. Go on. There's a bear looking. That's what you always smell. Now get out of here. Have you been smoking some garlic weed? Why do you have to ruin my video, man? Come on. You're doing a video? Yeah. Oh. You want to be on video? Sure. No, you don't. <laughs> See, reflection. <laughs> well, good for you. Eh. <laughs> I can see me in the re reflection, too. Ugh. Okay. That's enough now. What are you doing here? What Wanna smoke talking? garlic? No, but that's what everything tastes like to you. Because you've saturated yourself with garlic like I've saturated myself with THC. You filled every receptacle, every sense receptacle, every taste bud of your cells. Every taste bud, because all of your blood and all of your cells have taste bud. It's just filled with 15 with years. Exactly, just like the guy that turned blue. No, suddenly it's it's a ma it's a it's a what do they call that super saturation? You've reached super saturation, okay? No, no. This thing that you eat more than anyone else in the world. That not that much. So ask on the internet. Does anyone have a permanent? Anyone who eats garlic have a permanent garlic taste? Guys, huh? You think you're the only man? Or maybe other people that have been affected by blah, blah, blah. Go on, man. Of course, what? I'm revealing all your secrets. <gasps> what? Huh?
Huh? <laughs> you got a reflection on that. Huh? Oh, my reflection. Okay. Oh, come on. No, that's enough. Okay, yeah. Now your shadow just got in there. Hello. What are you doing? Hello. Right. What? Amitar. What's that? Cinnamon, cinnamon, bon. It's all gone. Yeah. That a gate. That a gate. That a gata. What? Nothing, man. Olin! Aloha! Alright. <sighs> the topic of the recovery movement. I saw a thread. Two days ago, um, days day after solstice, twenty second, or is it the twenty third? You know, whatever it is, solstice. I think it was yesterday. Yeah, in America here, it's still the twenty second. Where as you see, six hours behind, but midnight is fast approaching. But it's very odd. I'm not gonna talk about my suspicions, which I've made public already. Um, it's quite delightful too that this character, which I'm scrutinizing, and aside from my own, I scrutinize everyone's character, anyone that comes into my field of attention. Maybe it's too much. But it's merely for my own sake. I enjoy scrutinizing. And I feel like I've scrutinized this character enough. Whose intentions I question. And the terminology. Good intention, which everyone seems to throw about, means nothing. I'm actually going to let you on on a secret. the word good means except for that in it's a germanic word and it, what is the german word for good well it's good right or am i getting that wrong good is it good guten tag good day or good morning right guten tag Just like in English. Same as in English. Gut or good in German, Swedish, whatever. It actually, I think, yeah, in Swedish, Swedish, it's good. Is that the right? Uh, in Sweden, I can't quite get the accent there. Good, good morning. Maybe that's close enough. I don't know what the Swedish term for. This related term etymologically, but um, obviously it is just a derivation of the term in German, Gott. I believe this is G O T T, Gott. Actually, now that I say that, I'm a little bit more impressed with the German term Gott, like Gottfried von Strausberg, than I am with the English equivalent. Good. God, you hear, you hear anyone who's got any grasp on the English language, be them some Cambodian Buddhist talking about the Buddha as if he was God, and plenty of Christians, American Christians, and European Christians and 
African Christians and Black American Christians and Asian Christians and even atheists. And don't forget, you know who. God. Oh, God. And they, they've inserted it as a line into their porno flicks. Oh, God. What's with all these Yehudi girls? Or, anyway, Christianized Yehudi girls screaming. <laughs> God, <laughs> that's what she's calling the man. Okay. Unfortunately, with what this word God is loaded with is so much crap. We have better terms. I'm going off into this terrible tangent. Oh well, it's Friday night. Let's keep this rolling. Keep it bounding. That's what the word good means. It means of God. It's just an adjective form of the word God. Just as it is in German. Gott and gut. I think that those are the two words. God and good. So good intentions. Anyway. That was where I brought this up. I've got this whole riff of etymology going with the phoneme G-O-O. -O, because what does that mean? Double O. G O O. That's goo. And what is goo? It's another word that contains a double O. Begins with double O. And ends with a Z E. That is ooze. I am been having this riff for a while. I want to make a fine presentation. A fine presentation about this riff that anyway to me really is the best kind of scrutiny that I've ever given to anything especially linguistically that the term good is not good enough so to speak good is a bad term because it doesn't mean anything it, it means ooze in fact it is the past tense of the verb Goo. What, is, what does it mean to goo something? You can have, and I'm doing this with mustache cream. Freak. You can have a bottle of glue or you can have a bottle of maple syrup. Yes, let's just, this is perfect actually. And it's not open yet. But um, you can use your imagination, listen. in here maple goo this here is some maple goo I haven't opened this yet because that's just my backup uh, anyway. that's maple goo and if I pour it onto my waffles you could say that I'm gooing my waffles so what does it mean to be gooed it means that you've got goo all over you it means that you're on that one show one channel on the American one. They they deal with slime a lot. This is another synonym of goo. Not synonym. Is that right? The same means the same thing. Different word means the same thing. Slime, ooze, goo. I'm giving you my riff here. Prematurely. Anyway. That's how I feel about good intentions. It's like this excuse. It's like the word hope. I'll just give you the brief riff of hope. Now, take two students in any classroom, and the teacher is due to give them a test. And he gives them ample time, typically in what my classroom experience, and the lesson would begin on Monday. It would carry on through Tuesday, Wednesday, and so forth, with homework and all that good stuff. Good, good stuff. teacher would announce uh, a test for the lesson, an exam, on Friday. Mm. 
So you have two students in the classroom. Obviously. It's going to be the difference between these two students is that one is prepared. One of these students is prepared. To cut to the riff. The other student has hope. Prepared doesn't need to hope about anything. The student who is prepared, who prepares himself, is confident. He might not get a hundred percent accuracy, whatever that accounts for, but he may perform well on the test from memory of the lesson. From uh, I don't want to say paying attention from dedicating attention to the teacher's lesson and the course material, whatever. Okay, I was a fairly successful student and um, so much that it was, it got quite boring. Anyway. The other student has not prepared and therefore must have a lot of hope or they might say I hope I pass the test what they are actually saying is that they want to have the reward without any effort of their own this is what hope is it's like saying you know I hope that my great grandparent blah 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 doesn't succumb to cancer or whatever. I hope that we have enough money in the bank account. <laughs> have you ever heard that? Have you ever uttered that such a phrase? I hope I have enough money on the card. I hope I have enough money in the account. You say that because you know there isn't. You know there isn't enough money in the account. Or whatever. You know that you're ill prepared, so you want some supernatural agency like God to just give you a pleasant result despite your lack of effort. This is what ho this is what hope is for. Those who uh, put in no effort and are due to be whatever, to s see the consequences of their non-action. That's also kind of a good intention. That's a good intention. Not only is it an ooze intention, it's like an ooze of ill-defined intentions. Oh, I want things to be good. That's not an intention. I want people to be happy. That's not. That's not an intention. I want people to like me. That also is a very vague intention. I mean, it's vague. It's um, it is very vague and an oxymoron. <laughs> See how delighted I am. How delighting I find this. this person, be they who they are or what they are, triggered a very great topic, and I had, anyway, I had to stop listening to this talk about ten minutes toward to, to the end. I'm sure that there's viable stuff, but I'm catching something here. I'm catching something, and now I would like to present a little montage. There is... Still, it's like, um, here's a great analogy. Have you ever had to put furniture together that came in a box or came in boxes? Can you imagine such furniture if you haven't? Imagine a box filled with couch legs and screws and maybe an Allen wrench. We call it an Allen wrench in America. I have heard. Uh, of of Saxony that you call it an Allen key. Yeah, yes, it 
opens this man. Um, and perhaps it's not the proper term, but in American English we call it an Allen wrench. Because that is sort of the action of using this thing. You wrench something on, which I think... I haven't looked into the etymology of wrench, but I think wrench means to forcibly twist something. Anyway, that's what wrench should mean. Key means to unlock or lock. Lock or unlock. And that's just bizarre. It's bizarre syntax for me. When I, I, because I deal a lot with Allen wrenches and such things. Hex bits and bolts, bolts and screws. And it's very strange to consider that I'm locking the screw in place. But we do have lock washers, so okay. Yeah, it is in a sense locking it in place. Um, but there's not a, it's not a container or a gate which you would lock. Or open with a key but key also works key is something that you turn in this sense I find the Saxon the English the proper English to be well it's what it is you can you can give me all the scrutiny you like for my thrown together accents all right i'll just move my lips like i like to move them and i don't care where on earth they emerge if you can grasp half of what i intend to say or rather what i'm trying to mean hmm. So you have a box from Ikea. Very popular Swedish. Cheap furniture. Affordable. And it comes in all these parts and you get bolts and things. And you can pick up a part and say, oh yeah, this is the, this here is the, the, the armchair. Arm. This is the arm of the chair or the couch or the love seat, whatever. Oh, and this here is the leg. Right? You see all these pieces. And um, you assemble it into a mass without... Uh, Referring to the manual, who needs the manual? <laughs> yeah, I didn't need the manual. I don't need the manual. I'll, I'll write my own manual. You can too. Wait. I have something very special for you and your ears alone. Hope you enjoyed that. But just because you put all the parts and you have all the correct parts, you have all of the correct parts in the kit. You can't just stick them in any place you like. You can't just bolt any part together in any fashion that you like and you might be able to construct a decent love seat or something that can function as a, a sitting surface it doesn't mean that you do it properly or elegantly in this case where you are honing the signals syntax the signals the syntax could be signals because sign as in significance, S I G N. It's also close to sing. S I N G. Sign is something that you write on a sign. No, like a sign post. It's a writing upon a post. It's calligraphy. Literature. The written word or the written symbol is a sign, so signage. Where was I? Where did I said sorry on recording. Syntax is what I meant to say. Syntax.